Hi, I'm Sammy Harper. If you've been around MIT's campus, you've probably heard some popular myths. Today, we're going to dust them off and set the record straight. Why was this bridge named for Harvard when it leads to MIT? The myth is that when the bridge was built, MIT turned down the naming rights and let Harvard have it. They say that MIT's engineers took a look at the bridge, decided it was structurally unsound, and wanted no association with it. So what's the real story? In fact, this bridge was built in 1891, 25 years before MIT moved to its Cambridge campus in 1916. And the bridge was named for John Harvard, not the school. But tech pride showed through. Whenever the bridge was closed for renovations, students would try to rename the bridge for MIT. In 1946, an editor for the Tech launched a campaign to rename it Technology Bridge. But before he could petition the state legislature, he ran out of time. Exams were coming up. Soon after, a letter to the editors at the Tech summed it up. As to your proposed renaming of the bridge, it seems to me that naming it for Harvard is appropriate. It's shaky as hell and tech men walk all over it. Behind me, you see this imposing piece by the famous sculptor Alexander Calder, an important campus landmark. Called the Big Sail, it echoes the boats on the Charles. There's a myth about why it was placed here in front of MIT's tallest building, the Green Building. The story goes that Calder designed the Big Sail for this very spot in order to deflect the high winds that come rushing through McDermott Court. So what's the real story? When the Green Building opened in 1965, People discovered that winds off the river were so strong, it was sometimes difficult to open the doors. So, studies were conducted in the MIT Wright Brothers Wind Tunnel to study alternate designs for the entry, leading to the revolving doors in place today. Meanwhile, separately, as plans were being made to install Calder's big sail, a scale model of the sculpture was also being tested in the wind tunnel to determine its stability. So the fact that these two wind studies were conducted almost simultaneously is pure coincidence, and not because the sculpture would help solve the wind problem. The big sail was installed in McDermott Court because it looks good here. And if it helps tame the roaring winds, well, that's just the power of art. In the early 1960s, the federal government bought several acres of land in Kendall Square for a NASA research center. We choose to go to the moon in this decade. The myth is that this would be Mission Control, NASA's manned space flight center. President Kennedy hailed from Massachusetts. So, when he announced his race to the moon in 1962, naturally, Mission Control would be in his home state. And where better than right here in Kendall Square, right next to MIT? The flames would be in Cape Canaveral, and the brains would be in Cambridge. As the myth goes, when Kennedy was assassinated and Lyndon Johnson became president, LBJ moved NASA's manned spacecraft center to his home state of Texas. Uh, here's what we've had a problem. Could it have been Cambridge we have a problem? The answer is no. Even while Kennedy was still alive, the plan for Kendall Square was always a NASA electronics research center. Mission control was always slated for Houston. Unfortunately, the NASA Electronics Research Center only lasted in Cambridge until 1970, when the federal budget was cut and the center was taken over by the Department of Transportation, the DOT. There were going to be three tall buildings, but only one of these was built. In the end, the DOT hired many of the NASA researchers for what is now the Volpe National Transportation Systems Center. And so, another myth bites the dust. <laughs>